Thank you so much for coming. Obviously, you still have that fear that you're going to throw a party and no one shows up. So to see people here is like really awesome. I appreciate that you guys wanted to come and learn a little bit more about this topic. So let me start by saying we're going to be covering the skinny beauty ideal because a lot of times we subconsciously are trying to attain it without identifying what it actually is. So we're going to bring some things from our subconscious to our conscious mind so that we can actually evaluate if it's worth it because we've never actually been given ourselves that chance. We just work, work, work. We're Rihanna. Work, 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 work. Get skinny, 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 skinny. It doesn't ever get us anywhere. So at some point, we have to rationally go, what am I doing this for? And how is it affecting my relationship to health, my purpose, and what I'm actually going to contribute to the world? So let me ask you, how many of you have personally been affected by the skinny beauty ideal? OK. How many of you have personally been affected by Regina George? <laughs> it's basically the same thing, right? It's a bully that is constantly there that you're like, OK, I want to be like her, but she's such a jerk. And I'm going to try and be friends with her, even though she is, is abusive to me. It's really the same thing, right? So that's what we're going to examine today. And I think the best way to start this conversation, because there's so much going on in the media about body image, and a lot of it is bullshit. We can all agree. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. There's so many mixed messages. Hey, love yourself, let me sell you this product. Hey, be skinnier, let me sell you this product. Instagram is like so crazy when it comes to self esteem and how women think about their bodies, and it's all being monetized. So I want to start the conversation by talking about some of our pet peeves. What do you find to be annoying about sizing for clothing, body image, the messaging on social media? What are some things that is really bothering you? I'll go ahead and start. I find it annoying that the media portrays body image as a plus size woman's issue. Has anyone noticed that? That only if you're curvy do you have to try extra hard to love yourself. And that's why all those campaigns really target that demographic. When I've worked with all types of women and everyone's struggling to love themselves. So that's a pet peeve of mine that I would like to see change. Does anyone want to share a pet peeve of theirs? Yes. <laughs> Brandy Melville, is that it? It's one size fits all, and it's literally the size of this card. And you're like, who, like, who's wearing this? That's a great one. What else? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, see, I have a flat ass and long legs, so like, we're all the, we're the exact opposite, same problem. <laughs> That's so annoying. Jean shopping is like the worst next to swimsuit shopping, for sure. What else? Yeah, right? But well, don't you find that interesting with Lady Gaga? Because hers is all very much about her image and appearance, but then when she gained weight, she championed this curvier shape and then immediately lost weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, there's like contradiction in all of this. What about sizing? How about going to a store and buying the same size at four different stores and then being completely different sizes? That's annoying. How does that make us feel? It feels awful. Yes. Well, you've both had one. I, yeah, and I don't like it when you go to sports stores and even at least around here and their barges are, they don't make things. They're not really large. Right. <laughs> They're China large. Yeah. <laughs> it's very different than real life large. Yeah, yeah, it's a, totally. And we have even had that issue because we all buy shirts from vendors and things, and we hold it up and we're like, okay, this is totally not the size that it says, even with the size chart. So it's frustrating because there is not, there's no inches that are measuring sizes, they're just made up sizes. Yeah. Every time a celebrity has a little bit of a belly, is she pregnant? Is that a good bump? Very good one. So just in case you guys are wondering, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> But I did have a baby, so that's why that's normal looking. It's such a great point. It's this constant fixation on women's bodies, and that's really where we're getting our value. So if we're not identifying this messaging, because this is literally like a blip in our day of this messaging, and so much of it is subconscious. So that's where we're going to have to dive in to go, OK, well, how are we retaining it? What's the effect it's having when it's below the surface? So I started to 
think about these things as my experience in the modeling industry. I started as a plus size model when I was 17, playing volleyball competitively and was scouted, didn't know plus size modeling existed. I was about the size I am right now, probably a little bit smaller and more fit. And um, they're like, you'd be great for plus size. And I was like, that's not what any 17 year old girl wants to hear. I was like, wait a minute, I watched America's Next Top Model. Pretty sure I'm a supermodel. Don't know what this plus size thing is. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's my dream. So that's part of it. I was introduced to this idea that never occurred to me. I grew up in Casper, Wyoming. No one, that, that's not even a, something that would even spark in my mind as a possibility. And yet all of a sudden people are like, oh, this is what you are, this is your label. And so I was like, okay, cool. You're gonna pay me that money, I'm working retail. You can put a mustache on me, I don't care. I'll go make $2,000 to take pictures, awesome. But that actually started a really toxic cycle because then I was like, all right, how do I identify who I am when I can't decide what color hair I want, I can't paint my nails a certain color, I can't be a size that's natural for me, I can't do anything that's actually me, I have to be this image. So what happens is all of us, whether or not you're in the industry or not, are following that because the influence is so strong. So what we have to do is identify why we're following that. And so I started to feel like everything looked really good and everything was so empty. And I had that point where I was traveling for work and I was like, wow, like this is all, like I said, this is just bullshit. Like I thought this was gonna make me feel good. I thought it was gonna be special. I thought life was gonna be great. People are gonna like me, but yeah, I'm depressed. I'm unhealthy. I'm isolated. I'm alone all the time. No one relates to me because they think that I'm doing something cool that from the outside looks very different than the reality. It's competitive. The girls are shitty. It's this toxic world that is like looks so good from the outside. So I had to figure out how to give my, my life meaning in a way that was using the tools that I had. And at the time I thought that was my image. So I started to research all of these things and I had a breaking point where I licked frosting off a baking sheet after dieting and was on the kitchen floor. And I was like, holy shit, like this is not who I am. Like how am I so consumed by this that I feel like such an awful person for having frosting? And that's how powerful this is. So that's why I was able to hit rock bottom in I've been everything from a 14 to a six and back and pregnant and down and all over, which I'm sure most of you have as well. And so when we talk about this idea of body image being a one person's issue, it's actually all women and it's been created that way for a reason. So that's what we're gonna, going to dive deeper into. So Sigmund Freud, a lot of you are familiar with him. I wasn't, I was self-taught. I started searching these answers and I started watching these videos about our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. So what is that? When we say be conscious, what does that mean? I was like, yeah, how, what, how do we, how do we identify what that means? Awareness. Awareness, but for what? Like, what does that mean? Like, focus on something specific and be mindful in that, in that experience and be processing it. Okay, so being mindful. It's very good. But it's still very hard to put words to it because we're like, we kind of know what it is, but we're like, just like pay attention. You're like, cool. <laughs> like, it's hard to do all the time. So the best way that they explained it was that Consciousness is like an iceberg. So the part that's above the water is the smallest part. That is your conscious mind. That's like when we're here, we're present, we're aware, we know what's going on, we're like mindful. But the biggest part of the iceberg is our subconscious mind. And that's where we're actually storing and retaining most of the information in the media that we see. So how many of you driving, or who lives in LA? Two people live in LA, okay. So driving to get lunch, we're gonna see how many advertisements? Thousands. Like it's crazy, our mind sees it, but we can't remember a single one. That's what we're talking about. We did see it, it is being retained. We're just not consciously able to pull it up. So that's the bottom of the iceberg. So again, when we go, oh, let me try on this pair of pants. I'm ugly, I hate myself. There's so much more information in the bottom of that iceberg that we're pulling from that we're not even consciously aware of. So that was really helpful for me to be like, oh, whoa, I need to pay attention. I need to start analyzing these messages. And so that's what kind of made me go, I'm gonna look at this deeper. And what I found was one specific event in the 1900s when they started to convince women to smoke. So women were not allowed to smoke, only men could smoke because it was male dominated society. 
So Edward Bernays, who's Sigmund Freud's nephew, took his principles of realizing that you can advertise to people by tapping into their desires, which is underneath the iceberg, so not the top part, but all the things we really want, happiness, love, acceptance, all of those, those things, you can advertise to that place without someone knowing it. And then you're going to subconsciously be pulled to buy things or react in a certain way, whatever their agenda might be, without you being aware of it. So once I realized that, I was like, oh my god, like, how is this possible? This is so fascinating to me. Because it's really evaluating your sense of self. So when I looked at the definition of sense of self, it said, a person may not know who they are, but they always know who they think they are. So let's say that again. We might not know who we are, but we always know who we think we are. That is just a mind F. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> who's dictating who we think we are? So interesting. So when I learned about this one event, I was like, oh my god, it's like shattered my whole world. So they went to psychoanalysts and said, what do cigarettes mean to women? Because we want to get women to start smoking. We're losing half of our customer base. He said, oh, okay, well, cigarettes symbolize male dominance. So if you can convince women that by smoking, they're challenging male dominance, they'll smoke. So they went and they devised a PR campaign, and they, they hired socialites, so they hired Kim Kardashian, to show up at the Easter Day Parade, and they had cigarettes, and they lit up and smoked unapologeti unapologetically and super glamorous, of course, because it has to be hot. And they paid the paparazzi to shoot all these photos. So then they printed it all across the world in the newspapers, and they called it the Torches of Freedom. And they said that it was suffragettes that were lighting up in protest for women's equality. So anyone that saw that, any woman who was in support of female liberation and equality, thought that by smoking, she was joining this movement. Now, is that not fascinating? Because the sale of cigarettes began to rise from a fake campaign manipulating women thinking they're doing something good. And that's what pissed me off. Because we, we act because we are so kind and compassionate and we're being manipulated. And so I started to take that and I was like, this is crazy. And I started looking at ads and I started looking at commercials and things that I was a part of as a model that I wasn't even consciously aware I was a part of because we were taught to look so about ourselves. Like, what do I look like? Why am I not booking this job? How come that person has more than me? That's what all of us do. And we're being conditioned to solely identify with me instead of how do I contribute as a whole. So I started looking at, and I saw this Victoria's Secret commercial, and my mind was like, Phew. it was this exact same thing. And normally I play it, but I don't have it, so I'm just going to act it out for you guys. <laughs> so picture like white shears, OK? I'm Adriana Lima, and I'm in a thong. And there's wings, OK? And she says, when I put on these wings, I feel so empowered. It's like a dream. End scene. That was the entire commercial. <laughs> so I play that for these girls at high schools. And I say, what were they selling you? They say, uh, a bra, wings. I'm like, OK, let's do it again. Let's close our eyes and let's listen to what they just said. Don't be distracted by Adriana Lima's butt and her, her wings and her beautiful face. Listen to what she just sold you. And she said, when I put on these wings, I feel so empowered. It's like a dream. How many of you would like to be empowered? How many of you feel empowered when you're in a thong and fairy wings? <laughs> I think we're on to something here, <laughs> right? We can, we can look at it from a different perspective and laugh because it's ridiculous. But yet, at a different time, we might have watched it and been like, had nothing but negative things to say about ourselves. Or maybe we went and bought that bra or underwear. And another commercial we show is Victoria's Secret because they're like the number one offender. And it's the body for everybody. I don't know if you guys remember this one. But they actually got, they got pulled from the air because so many people finally called BS on it. So they would say, it's a body for everybody. I love my body. And you have to say it in an accent <laughs> because it like, is way more effective. 
So they're like up there and they're like, I love my body, my body is sexy, like I love me. And it's all the same body type with one ethnic woman. But there's a body for everybody. So we pull that up and we go, is this not the perfect example of false advertising? And when we ask young girls, because we teach, I work with Aviva and some different ones with these little girls, 6 to 12, and I play that commercial, and the moms are like, oh my god. And we said, how does it make you feel? And we said, it makes me feel uncomfortable. I said, why does it make you feel uncomfortable? They walked past those billboards to get to this event at the mall. And they said, well, it makes me feel like I have to like, take my clothes off, or it makes me feel like I have to wear a push-up bra, or it makes me feel like I have to be skinny. These are 6 to 12-year-old girls. So this is where it starts. And now it's times a bazillion because of social media is completely unfiltered. So not, not really, it's filtered, but like <laughs> uncensored is a better word. So that's one thing that we have to start to go, wow, where are we going to go from here? Especially as I just became a mom. Are there moms out here? OK. That's some scary shit. Like, you're like, oh my god, I'm dealing with my issues, but now it's so much worse for them because this whole other monster that's been born, like, how are we going to stop this? And so that's what really inspired me to do what I do and teach what I teach, because today we're going to really put a name on this ideal that is so powerful. But first we're going to describe it. So what is the skinny beauty ideal? Let's call it out. What are some things that we see as the perfect woman? What does she look like? Okay, tall, skinny, athletic, athletic. long hair. Long hair. Who said something? Blonde. Okay, flat abs. Long legs, big boobs. Long legs, big boobs. No cellulite. Okay, no cellulite. No wrinkles. No wrinkles. Okay. <laughs> long eyelashes. Perfect skin. Young. Yeah, she's twelve. <laughs> yeah. A big butt is a new one. But no what? But no thighs. Big butt, no thighs. Okay. So thigh gap with a big butt. Okay. I don't know why you guys are laughing. This is like a real thing. What else? Tan? Tan. Um, big lips. Perfect teeth. Eyebrows, too. Big eyes. Well dressed. <laughs> or naked. Yeah, naked's definitely climbing the charts of popularity for sure. Perfectly styled hair. Perfectly styled hair. Yes. Sexual but unattainable. Sexual but unattainable. And also sexual but because you love yourself. Okay. <laughs> hair, perfect hair and makeup. So like contoured to no end. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, well, they do. They say, I just woke up like this. You're like, OK, wow, that's full makeup and a filter. I'm pretty sure it didn't happen, but yeah. They just naturally look that way. What else? Hairless. Hairless, yeah. I gave my daughter my mustache. We, we were debating, like, who gave it to her, my husband or I. I'm pretty sure she got the rat tail and mustache from me. Um, for sure. That's always, like, another thing where you're like, oh, I have to go get wax. I have to do this, like, so that I look completely hairless. Anything else? What about nails? So that's a big one, like perfectly manicured and kept all the time. So if we normally we write this down, but I think we all are getting it. What do we call this person? We need to put a name on it. What would be our name for this look? Barbie. Barbie. Does <laughs> everyone feel good about that? OK. And when we talked with other groups, we also like coined the phrase like thin, thin slim, thick. slim thick. Thanks, Sam. Slim thick. So that's you still need to have body parts in all the right sexual places, but be thin everywhere else. So those are really interesting things to say. Wow, that sounds ridiculous. But yet we've never actually brought that from the subconscious to the conscious to go. That is stupid. We just work really hard to keep trying to better ourselves, because that's how we've been taught, is how we do it. So what we have to do from this point is evaluate, at what cost are we trying to attain this look that I think we can agree is actually impossible? 
So at what cost have we, have we experienced as individuals in the pursuit of that? What are some things that happens? Berating ourselves. What was that? Yeah, berating ourselves. So negative self-talk. Over-exercising. Over -exercising. Yeah. Plastic surgery. I don't know if I said that, but yes. Judge others. Judgment. I'm waiting for you to do things until you look right. Oh, there you go. One. Putting your life on hold until you're worthy to experience things when you look a certain way. What is another one over here? Unhealthy relationships with food. Unhealthy relationships with food. Let me just ask this. How many of you know people that have unhealthy relationships with food? How many of you know people who have gone up and down in size and are always trying new diets? And how many people do you know that do put their life on hold or maybe even reward themselves when they feel like they look just a little bit better? All right, so I think that's a great point to bring up because we try to think that when we talk about body image or, or disordered eating that it's a treatment level problem. Like only girls that have like anorexia have these problems. This is everyone. On some degree, we all have disordered thinking about food and relationships with our bodies. So understanding that's like a really awesome place to be, to be like, oh, okay, cool, we're all crazy. Like that's awesome. <laughs> like now we can get some work done, right? But it's not our fault, it's been, we've been conditioned this way. So that's why bringing this stuff up is awesome. So what are some other things that we've done in pursuit of something unattainable that's been harmful to us? What was that? Tanning. Tanning. Okay, so perfecting or spending time and money, resources on looking a certain way. How, I mean, the resources are crazy. That's the whole purpose for this ideal, so we keep spending, which is really important to understand. What about anxiety and depression? Uh, FOMO? How many of you have FOMO? <laughs> yeah, on on uh, social media, like in junior high and high school, we didn't have that, thank God. We would hear about parties like after, not watch them live. <laughs> where you're like, well, like, why wasn't I invited to this party? It looks so much fun. We saw that later. So fear of missing out is a huge thing because it feeds into the self-loathing, which feeds into the over-exercising, which feeds into the under-eating, which feeds into spending more money to look right so that we can have those experiences. So you're seeing how all of that's connected? So it's important to identify if this is us as individuals, collectively, what is the effect of this on our society for women? If it's this negative for us as individuals, collectively, what is the result on our culture? Competitive relationships with other women. We're against them, not for them. We're not empowered. We're not empowered. It's suppressive. It's suppressive. What else? And what does that do to women? It, it disempowers them. Right. What else? Let's talk about our relationships with men. So if we're, we have anxiety, low self-esteem, depression, lack of self-love, who are we going to choose to get in relationships with? People that love us and encourage all the greatness in us, or people that reinforce our beliefs about ourselves? How many of you have gone out with a few of those guys? <laughs> cool. Again, we're all on the same page. Or whatever, whoever you love or want to date. It's, it's all the same thing. Gender isn't an issue there. It's all the same thing. But that's one thing we go, wow, collectively, when we say the future is female, I always love those shirts because I'm a feminist, but at the same time, the future is equality. So by the rise of the female, that's where we're going to meet equality. But we can't do that effectively if we're keeping ourselves small and starving for purpose. Because all the things that we're spending, spending time, energy, our emotional values, all of that, is on superficial things that never get us what we were promised. So that's one thing I had to realize was like, wow, like what do I get if I look like a Victoria's Secret model? What do I get if I walk down the runway in my underwear and everyone watches me go like this on TV? 
with like a broom out my back and stuff. Like the weirdest costumes. What, get, what do I get if I get that? Validation. validation. Temporary validation. But what, what's the belief that we will get if we look like that? Uh, Love. Yeah. Wealth, success. What about security? Like we'll finally feel that thing that we've been wanting to feel for so long. Like yes, that's, that's a really powerful thing to pursue. We've just been taught to pursue it in a place that is empty. So love, success, happiness, validation, popularity, likes, that's now equated in there. Social media is such a big part of all of this because it manifests all the good or the bad. So that's something to pay attention to. So I think empowerment, like all of the stuff that I think women naturally want, that we naturally are born with, we are repressing in the pursuit of looking a certain way and confusing it all with being empowered. But that's not on accident. And that's something that everyone needs to bring from the subconscious to the conscious. So that when you're having these ideas where you're like, oh, I look old, or oh, I, I need to lose this, and these self-deprecating thoughts, it's not that you can stop that from happening, but it's all about how you handle them differently. And I think that's what this is about, this talk today, is not to say, hey, you guys are healed. All right, have a great rest of your weekend. It's, no, it's what I call an, it's a program interrupt. So I like to think of things like where our programming is an operation system, it's a computer. I have a 10-month-old daughter. She's being downloaded with information. And so you go, wow, like this is all a download. So it's not going to go away. But just being conscious of it works as a virus, where then that program's like, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, no one will love you. Oh, and all of a sudden, you have the consciousness to go, well, that was really messed up. Why did I just think that about myself? And all of a sudden, it's a whole different playing field. Because you have an opportunity to rationalize that weird, mean girl thought and correct it. And that's really where our power lies. It's not controlling our thoughts or thinking that we're not going to have them. It's just starting an opportunity to say, wow, what if I choose something different for myself? So when it comes to authentic health and wellness, we have no idea what that is. Like, none whatsoever. Because we've never given ourselves an opportunity to figure that out as individuals. We get sold magazine covers that are like, hey, here's how to make your favorite cake, and then lose it in five minutes, and then do abs, and uh, lose 15 pounds by Tuesday. That's not authentic health. So if we are going to talk about that, what are some things that you have experienced on your journey, that we've identified some of the negative, what are some of the positive that is not talked about in the media? What contributes to a really positive, healthy lifestyle besides eating well? Because we know what that is, and that's different for everybody. Every human has different DNA, requires different food, different tastes. We don't need to debate those things. That's your own experience, which is great to discover for yourself. So being active and eating well, what else contributes to you being a healthy human being? A connection with humans. That's the number one thing what we're like missing right now. And it's crazy we're going to have to start to teach that again. So that's really important. Healthy relationships. But in the same conversation, how about distancing yourself from shitty negative people? That's toxic. So we think we're doing really good, and then we can be around one person that we're like, oh, all the way back down. You have to start to recognize that and go, OK, I need to go buy more of these people, or maybe be by myself for a while. That's a really great place to be in. What else? Sleep. Sleep. I don't get much of that lately, but I miss it. And I remember how great it used to be, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yes? Yeah. Right, so you're working out from a place of self-love versus a punishment. Like, that's a very different motivation with a very different outcome. It's important. What else? I totally agree. Having a voice. Like, it's so scary to do that, especially because you feel like social media, you feel like everyone has an opinion, people are mean. But giving your power to just owning your experience is really a freeing thing, because we do bottle all of that negativity up, and you kind of release it. You're like, oh, this is who I am. Cool, if you don't like it, don't look at me. Like, that's a very powerful place to be. So working towards that goal is really, really awesome and freeing. What else? What about stress? 
we have expectations, we have school, we have jobs, we have pressure to monetize stuff all the time. We have pressure to look a certain way, we have pressure of a family, like women take on, more than anyone, women take on all of that shit. It's like, I'm gonna keep everything together, it's my duty, and then I'm gonna put myself over here once I get all of this done, then I'll take care of this. And we've been taught that, actually, because we're selfish if we go, I need to take care of myself so that I can take care of all of this. So those are all things to really bring to the surface. But pay attention as you discover what's healthy for you, the lack of that represented in the media. So the final question to bring it all together is why do you think the media doesn't want to teach healthy messaging? Oh, do you want to say that louder? It doesn't sell. So again, we have to remember that we're a part of a system that is based in money. So I'm going to read you off some stats real quick because these ones were amazing. So the beauty industry makes $95 billion a year for a reason. So you better think twice <laughs> about them going, you don't need that makeup. We'll sell you this makeup that looks like you're not wearing makeup, right? That's a lot of money. The fashion industry is $1.2 trillion. So these are very powerful entities <laughs> that are not really caring about your well-being. So understanding that's important. And with the diet industry, this one's amazing. So there are 108 million dieters in the U.S. per year. 108 million. Now that's interesting because 85% of them are women. And to tie it up, you go, 95% of dieters regain their weight in one to five years. So to me, that should be enough evidence to say that they don't work. And when we're making an investment in ourselves, an investment in our health, that's a bad investment. So what I wanted to do today is bring some of these things to your attention so that it's, it is that program interrupt. And you do go and you start thinking about these things to go, oh, okay, what happens if I break up with diets? What happens if I don't stop if, what, what happens if I put on a swimsuit right now and walk outside? Absolutely nothing. You might actually enjoy it. You know what I mean? What happens if we start to challenge ourselves to find meaning with who we are outside of our physical bodies? And what is the effect overall on society for women? And that's a really powerful place to be. So I hope that this has brought some things to the surface for you, some things to think about, some things to pay attention to when you're looking around at media what the images show versus the messaging on it. And I hope that you join us in making healthy the new skinny because health is unique to all of us and all of us can win and be successful in that together. But we can never do that if we're competing to be small. So thank you very much and we'll open it up for discussion.